Welcome to New Mars King Air 2025 floor plan 4596. We're going to take a walk through and show you how to operate your coach. So if you come up here, we'll start with the hydraulic leveling. The first touch pad here is your hydraulic leveling. This is to put your jacks down and level your coach. The way this operates is you have to have your ignition turned on. Once your ignition turn is turned on, you'll be able to uh, go into the auto level or manual level here. So right now we're in the travel mode, but once we turn the ignition on, you'll see it power up. And as soon as I hit the power with the ignition, you can see there's two yellow lights that just tells you you're a little off level where those indicate. And to auto level, we're just going to hit the auto level button and it will go into its leveling process. You can hear the air dumping out of the airbags. And as each jack extends down in the corners of where the jack is, you'll see a red LED come on. That means the jack is going down. If the coach is too far off of level, it may go into excess slope. If that happens, you'll have to move your coach to a more level position to use the jacks. You'll be able to feel the coach move slightly when the jacks are hitting the ground and leveling the coach. You'll also be able to hear that kind of a whining sound. That's your pump motor pumping fluid into the jack cylinders. Okay, so we're a little too far off of level. It tried to level, but we're a little bit too much on a slope, and that's why you get the excess of slope. In this case, we could either repark the coach in another area uh, to make so that we could get perfectly level, but it's as level as the coach can get for the location we're at. When we're ready to jacks, we still have to have the ignition on, and then we would just hit the auto store button here, and now we're retracting the jacks because they're gonna be storing. As each jack retracts, the red light will go out. And once the jacks are completely retracted, you should see the LED light come on for travel mode. Okay, we have one more jack that's retracting here. Once that goes out, that last jack has retracted. And just to ensure that it's fully retracted before you travel, you wanna go outside and look at the jacks visually just to make sure they have retracted all the way before you leave the park. Okay, now you can see we're in travel mode. So we would be able to travel, start the coach and it would air up and you can travel once the coach is fully aired up. The gear touchpad or the touchpad control for forward, which is drive, D, or reverse, is your Allison touchpad here. When you're ready to travel or put the coach in reverse, D would be drive, R is reverse, and N is neutral. Whenever you select one of those, it will appear in this display. So we'll show you a quick visual on what you would see when you do that. You start the engine. You'll see it gives you the indication that you're in neutral now. If I put the coach in drive, it will show D and the gear that I'm in. So I'm in the first gear. N is neutral. And I already put on the brake before I switched it into gear. If I wanted to move the coach, I would have to release the parking brake by pushing it forward. Whenever you park the coach, you want to put it in neutral. There is a mode button here. You can go through the different modes to see the engine oil temp and or errors may appear in this window. But typically you want to watch and see what your gear is doing. And you can scroll through when you're in the mode you can scroll through here 
Once the transmission is up to temperature, you can simultaneously press and plus arrow to see what the level is of the oil in your transmission. The toggle switches in front of our shift is a tag dump. We can either manually dump or leave it in auto. The center one is your engine brake. Engine brake on, engine brake off. If the engine brake is on, it's going to assist you in slowing the coach down like a brake would do but you can choose whether you want low, medium, or high for that engine exhaust brake. If you don't want any brake at all, you can just leave it in the off position. So just down from our engine brake controls, you have your USB auxiliary inputs here for the Excite dash radio. And below that one is a USB charger. Moving up here, you have your phone charger. You just place your phone in here and it will charge. This is your air brake. You need to have this pulled towards you to apply the brakes when you park. So always put the coach in neutral and then pull the, uh, pull the yellow handle towards you and that applies all the brakes in the coach. Just the opposite of that would be when you're ready to travel or go in reverse, you would put your foot on the brake pedal, release the parking brake by pushing it forward, and then put the coach in gear. To adjust the mirrors, the mirror adjusts left and right. Once you put it in the left or right position, you just toggle the arrows towards the direction so that you can adjust your mirrors on the left side and then do the same for the right and then when you're finished leave the switch in the center so you in case you might bump those or touch them it won't move your mirrors after you have them set these are your parking light and fog light switches this is your automatic light for let me turn the key on so you can see this. So right now our lights are turned on. This is your fog light here. This is for your uh, lights and your automatic lights is the A. So if you have this one turned on, they will automatically come on as long as this switch is on. You can dim the brightness of the switches here. There is a overhead light right above the driver's seat for your dome light. And then you have your high beams here. You can automatically have the high beams come on or dim if you leave this on. If you don't want the high beams to come on automatically, just cancel them out and you can use this lever pulling back to go bright or dim. There's the automatic traction control here. You can turn that on and off. Automatic traction control is used in adverse weather conditions when you need additional traction. You just refer to your owner's manual for more information on that. This is your window, your driver's window open and close. You can turn your air horn on or leave your street horn on for your uh, horn here. The house battery boost. If we have a chassis battery, for instance, that's low and the coach won't start, we can press this down towards the chassis and the house batteries will boost the chassis battery so you can start your engine. You will need to hold this down for about a minute, 60 seconds to get the batteries to boost. And then you would press the ignition and that will help you crank the engine to start. In the event that the house batteries are low, 
you can press towards the house and the chassis batteries will connect with the house batteries and that will assist you in getting the inverters to come on and charge as long as your generator is on or you're plugged into shore power. This is for heavy tow. You can leave this on if you're towing something extremely heavy. If not, you can just leave that off. The amount of braking that you have applied to what your trailer is towing can be adjusted here. So once you push the button and turn it, you can set the level of braking here. Refer to your owner's manual for those instructions. The preset mirror, pedals, and steering wheel that you set when you drive for a particular driver can be put into memory by pressing one and set two or three for three different drivers. It doesn't set the seat, but it does the steering wheel position, the mirror position, and the pedal position. Moving over here to our glass dash, you'll see you've got the temperature, outside temperature, your fuel indicator gauge, temperature for your engine, temperature, oil pressure for your engine, front and rear air pressure, DEF, tachometer, ODO trip and distance to empty, shift indicator, reverse neutral drive, state of charge, not state of charge, but your amount of voltage at your chassis battery. It's 12.7 volts DC at your chassis battery now. There is no collision mitigation system on right now because we're not in the drive mode, but when that comes on, you'll see that. As well as your mobile eye for lane assist. Your mobile eye is mounted on the front windshield, and when you're driving, you'll have lane assist here and collision mitigation here displaying on the glass dash. The home screen is in the center, and the selections for the home screen can be chosen here where you see the home button. So if I press the home button, it takes me here, and then I can press the up arrows to make a selection. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to change the brightness. Once I get to that window, I can just press the OK button. And now I can adjust with the arrows. A little bit lower intensity or higher. That's as bright as it gets. So we go down. So you can make adjustments to any of these. Once you press the OK, then you can adjust with the arrows. Whenever you want to get back to the home screen, from your adjustment, just press the home button again and you're back at the home. TPMS is for your tire pressure monitoring. Let's say you wanted to know what the tire pressure was in your coach, just scroll down to TPMS and you can see all your tires are displayed there and the pressures that they are inflated to. So that's the cluster that will show these settings and make adjustments to those settings here on the right. The center cluster here is going to be your radio source and volume for your radio, or mute the radio in the center. The two light selections for running lights or headlights are just to press momentarily to flash those lights. So you can see when you press it, it flashes the lights. And you can scroll through your music with these buttons here. The pad on the left is for phone hang up or call. As long as your phone is connected to your Excite radio, you'll be able to make telephone calls via Bluetooth, for instance. Wiper, wiper delay, wiper wash, and high and low settings are here. Once you are finished using the wipers just to turn it off, just press the off button in the center. It will, whether it's on high or low or intermittent, it will turn it off. On the left-hand side, 
we have our turn signals here, left and right. If we need to turn our emergency flashers on, we pull this lever on the bottom of that turn signal. To shut the emergency flashers off, all you have to do is press up or down on the turn signal to cancel the emergency flashers off. In addition to other controls on the left column, halfway down here is a small button that you can press to reset the Trimark code. So only press that button when you're ready to change your entrance code on the Trimark handle on the left-hand side of the entrance door. When you press that button, it puts the handle into programming mode where you would enter your new code twice if you wanted to change your entrance code. To the left side of the column on the wheel here, we have our adjustments for the telescoping of the wheel or tilt. The two paddles on the right side are for the steering assist. We can go lower settings or higher, and that adjusts the amount of power steering. And then we have our pedals adjust. You can see the pedals move forward and back when we move this one. If for any reason you have your key fob within the correct range of operating or giving the signal to start your engine and it won't start, you can use the manual set of keys that Numar provides in the coach. There's an ignition switch mounted underneath here where you can't see, but you can feel it. So you can take the key, you can take your key and you can insert it. And then you can use this ignition key instead of this one to start your engine. Just turn it and that will start your engine. When you come to a stop, just turn it off. So we have a large infotainment center here. Your camera display is going to be on a split picture. You're going to have your cameras here and your infotainment center on the left hand side. To turn this on, we just press and hold, release. Now we've turned on our radio core and our cameras. We can scroll through our cameras or our infotainment center. Here's our camera control here. So we can either get to the camera control there or we can just hit cam here and it gets you to the same place. Once we're there at the camera control, we can change our views on either screen to front or side or rear. In the rear mode you can adjust the distance to be further away or close up or mid-range. There are split cameras here or all around and if you want to see 360 degrees around your coach there's your 360 degree view. If we go back to the menu if we want to get to the navigation screen, we can go here or here. We have to accept. And now we can choose from the menu a new route, multi point, and other selections for navigation. This tells us basically where we're at. If we're back in the menu and we're not going into navigation, or camera control. Let's say we want to adjust our radio. We can turn our radio on here and go through either uh, band selection, AM, FM. We have our media center, our Sirius XM, Bluetooth. If you select Bluetooth and you wanted to connect your telephone, 
so that you can make calls with the touch buttons here on the wheel. You just press the phone and then you would pair your phone with the ID that you see on your Bluetooth. And then your phone is paired with the radio. There's HDMI, auxiliary, and there's setup. So when you initially set up your radio, you can go through here and set your radio up the way you like. There's volume control for when you make a call on a paired device. And if you're done with the radio and or the radio adjustments, you can turn it off here just like we turned it on. Just a quick note, if you are wanting to listen to the radio outside, you'll need to make the selection for house mode. So at the main screen here, the house mode would have to be selected if you wanted to hear the radio out in the outside entertainment center. I'll turn that off and we'll move down to the controls here. If we would like a heated steering wheel, we can turn this one on. The overhead fans can be turned on and then we can go high, medium, or low with the overhead fans. The one just beside is a fan down at the floor level for heat coming out from the ITR Oasis. We don't have that on now, so we can't hear the fan speed, but it's low or high. And that will give us the heat. The docking light switch on and off. Courtesy lights on off. If we want to start our generator here manually instead of at the Silverleaf screen, we can start our generator here. We can see the button come on. Generator starts. If we're finished with the generator, we can just turn it off. The entrance door lock is here. Lock or unlock. And of course, we have our visors here. Our visors are for the cockpit area. You'll notice that the visor will go up along with the shades or down. Now we have the ignition on and you'll notice that I pressed the shades to go down but they went up. It's a safety feature. If the ignition is off then the shades will come down. And the reason it's designed that way by our engineering is so that if you're ignition is on, you're driving, the shades would only come down to the halfway point. So that's why they only go up and they would stop at the halfway level if you wanted them to be there. Just below that we have our HVAC controls for heating and cooling. You'll need to turn it to at least the number one to make the settings and have the fan come on. This is for your air conditioning. When the ignition is on. You'll see that there's an LED that comes on. The LED is a blue LED light. That means your compressor for your air conditioning is on. If you'd like, you can recirculate that air in the front here to cool it down faster. Or for heat, you can go to defrost or defrost or any one of the other selections. When you're finished, you just turn these off and turn it back to zero. There's additional storage space here. And there's louvers to the right that you can make adjustments over on that side for air for the passenger or towards the window. One vent continues to blow air, so we can't turn both of those off. There's always going to be one that blows air. At the driver overhead, you've got your front camera. Just below that, you have an access door. Once you open this door, you'll see the other controls located in this cabinet. Starting at the left top is your Wi-Fi Ranger router, your power over Ethernet, and your grand stream. Those are for video recording here. If you're not recording video uh, through your Rosie, you can turn this off and on. The switch on the right is your HWH Master Reset switch. You can press this down and hold it for five seconds. That resets your entire HWH system in the event that your slide or your steps may not be working. Moving down here, 
you have your antenna for your television. It's called WineGuard. Your WineGuard antenna needs to be turned on, like it is here. The green indicator light shows it's on. Once it's turned on, you can do a search for channels. And once it scans, it will show you how many channels it found locally. You can make adjustments to your antenna here. As long as this antenna is on for your over-the-air TV channels, you won't be able to view cable. So if you want to watch cable, you'll need to turn this off. Just press that, and that turns it off, and you'll be able to watch cable. But for viewing television over the air, you'll need to have that on. You can see it's scanning for channels there. The control beside the over-the-air TV is the Girard awnings. You can adjust your Girard awnings here. In, out, and lights on, off. Same way that we will show you shortly with the remote antenna. You will select the channel for the awning. These are patio awnings, and that's your door awning. If you want to run all of your awnings out at the same time, select zero, and then the direction you want to move them, and they'll all go at the same time. The batteries in your coach for the battery management system are both illuminated now because they're turned on. As long as the battery management system is turned on, they're illuminated blue. If they're flashing, that means that they may have reached their 10% level and they're off. In that case, you'd want to get your coach plugged in or your generator running and then depress the button and release it until the blue became a solid instead of flashing LED. Whenever they're solid, that means the battery's on and supplying power from your house batteries into your coach. Once, if, if you see these are not illuminated at all or they're completely off, that means that you've reached the 10% level and you would want to enable the inverters because the batteries need to be charged. To do that, you have to use the last 10% level of charge or state of charge in the battery and you have to press and hold that down to turn it on on both BMSs. Once that's done, go to your Silverleaf screen and check and make sure that your inverter is turned on. If it won't come on, you'd want to double check at your inverters to make sure they're not in a state of fault or that a breaker tripped. Reset default or press the breaker in at the inverter if that is the situation. We'll show you where those are shortly. Moving over here, uh, there's a warning. Just be sure that both the driver and passenger seat are forward away from the back of the seat towards the front of the slide. This is the driver side slide, and this is the passenger side. You have to hold that in or out to move it in that direction until it's completely extended or retracted. To run or extend the slide outs to the extended position, we want to make sure that our air is on full air ride, front and rear. After we've done that, we can come here to the overhead and we can run the slide out as long as the seats and the back of the seat and the arm rests are forward of both slides. So make sure that the arm rests and the seat is forward on both the driver and the passenger seat. Once you've made sure that you've got clearance, you can go back up here to the overhead and you can see driver side slide out and passenger side slide out. So we'll start with the driver side and you have to press and hold the button to the extend position and that room will go out. Stand forward and I'll go to the room.
for the full wall room like this one, you want to make sure that not only is it extended, but that it drops down into place. So you have to hold your finger down until the room goes all the way down to the floor, and it will shut off by itself automatically. You don't have to release it. Just leave your finger on it, and it shuts off. Then you can release your finger. Now we're going to run out. We're going to run the kitchen slide out the same way. Press and hold out. And the pump will shut off automatically, and then we can release our finger. This is your exterior step switch. This just overrides the door closing and opening. So when you open your door, your steps goes out. If you close your door, your steps come in. If, if it's in the down position, you're overriding it. If you want the steps to work with the door open and close, then you turn it on. You can hear the steps are closing because we have the door closed. The Wi-Fi router, which is here, is your Wi-Fi Ranger. It has to be turned on to power up so that you can re receive power and signal reception with the Wi-Fi router and signal out. You have uh, security sensors here in the coach. You can turn your security sensors on and off, your security lights on and off, your passenger security lights on and off. These are your privacy drapes here in the front of the coach, privacy drapes for the door, and passenger window on the side of the passenger seat. So those will all operate those uh, drapes up and down here. This is just an access port for communication with the RBC systems for diagnostics, so you won't need to worry about that. So moving over here to the entrance door area, you have additional storage here. And these two cabinet doors open up and you'll be able to see these three white boxes are for the three awning controls for your Gerard awnings. So you can operate them remotely. This is the reception device and it receives the signal from your remote and will open your door awning or your patio awning and close it. Now, if for some reason your battery died in your remote, you could still operate it from inside in the overhead, or if that doesn't work, you can press the open or close button here or stop is in the middle on any three of those awnings. You must have the awning plugged in here to the recept because the motors in all of the awnings are 120 volt operated. And keep in mind, these are on a GFCI circuit. So if the awnings are not working with any controls, you want to make sure to go into the sub panel in the half bath and just make sure that the GFCI didn't trip for those controls. We're going to show you the screen door. We're going to move the drape up here at the doors. So to operate the screen door, let's say you had the main entrance door open or closed. You can close the screen door here and it latches. To unlatch, you just push down and it has a spring that pulls it back. So again, just pull closed, locks, you can see the lock mechanism here, push down to release, and the door will close by itself. Just beside the passenger seat, we have our buddy display panel. This displays the same thing as the one here at the driver's uh, screen for either navigation or cameras. You just have to make that selection after you power it up. It's just a mirror image of what you see there. There's the phone charger here. So once you place your phone here, you'll see that the green light, it beeps and it's charging now. 
you got your cup holder, your step cover is where I'm standing. So if you wanted to stand here, but you didn't want to be on the steps, uh, for instance, maybe you're driving and you wanted the step cover to come out so you could stand in this position without going down the stairs, just press the step cover button and the step will come out and up. And now I can stand here without having to go down the steps. To retract it, it's just moving the switch in the opposite direction. The step cover stows away. You've got your visor here. The visor is not the drape, but it's for blocking sun if you're not using the drape. You have your courtesy lights, so when you come in the coach, you can turn your lights on or off quickly as you enter the coach. That's all on lights. There's a map light right above the passenger seat here. You can turn on and off, and you've got your patio light. Your patio light can be adjusted for either white or amber color, and that's on the outside right above the window here. You'll see a red rocker switch here. This is your battery disconnect, so when you first enter the coach to have lighting or any other controls inside the coach, you need to turn this on so the red light displays. This is the toggle switch for the baggage door lock and unlock here. And then the toggle switch down below here is for the step well lighting on and off. There's an override switch here for the steps that are outside. If we need to override the steps, we can press that button. And you can hear the steps will go out just by pressing and holding that button. This switch bypasses all of the security features, so you wanna make sure there's no one standing outside or there's no objects that would be coming into contact with the steps when they're moving out. Just below that, you've got your fire extinguisher. If you need to use that, just flip the release lever here in up position, and that releases the fire extinguisher so you can use it. If you are using it or finished, you can, or checking the date, you can put it back and then just lock the lever latch back in place. You'll see a smoke detector here at the entrance of the coach, and you'll see a red LED light that will flash every few seconds that tells you it's powered up. But if you want to test it, press in the center and hold for a few seconds, and you'll hear a series of tones. Those tones tell you that the alarm is working, the smoke alarm is working, and the batteries are charged. If you don't hear the series of tones when you press those buttons, that means your batteries need to be replaced. If the batteries needed to be replaced, you can just pinch and pull down, and you can see your nine volt battery here that you would need to replace. And then once you replace it, you'd want to make sure you see the LED light flash and check for that tone by pressing the center. Moving over here into the living room area, you have your touch panel control for your lighting. If you go to your home screen and you want to find out a little bit more about how the lighting or shades or fans or any of your systems work, you're not sure how that works, you can press the I. If you press the I and then the shades, for instance, it gives you directions. The operating instructions are all here for you to see. You can scroll over for additional operating instructions. And as you go through those, you can scroll back or back to the home screen. Once you're in the home screen, again, you can turn on any one of the accent light bathroom, but you can make those selections here. Let's say for lighting, for instance, you can just turn them off by pressing here. They'll all go off, or you can just adjust them up a little bit for full brightness or mid-range for 
a little bit dimmer. Go back to that. At the home screen, we can make a selection on any device. Let's say we wanted to raise the TV lift, for instance. We would go to Systems. And then these are the systems that we can control. Water pump, generator, TV lift up or down. Say we select TV lift up. When it highlights in red, you can see the TV is starting to go up. Press it again, it will stop, and then press the TV lift down, and it will go down. Same with the generator or water pump. Whenever you press that button, it illuminates red instead of gray. That means it's turned on. Moving down, we have another 120 volt outlet with USB charge ports for charging devices. And then moving over into the living room area, we have a sleeper sofa and there's a, a nightstand here with storage and backlighting. The TV lift we just saw come up. In addition to the TV lift, if you press and release, there's additional 120 volt outlets here. So we're going to put the television lift up. So we go over here to our systems, select systems, and then go to TV lift up. And we're going to show how the television over the air channels are selected and set up. In order to do that, you have to have the wine guard antenna turned on, and that's at the driver's seat overhead. We showed that earlier in the video, so we'll make sure that's turned on. So with our television turned on, um, we'll, we'll use our remote control to go to the home screen, press the home button in the center. That gets to this screen, and then this icon here is our selection for menu. So just uh, toggle over to the left here and go to settings. So you'd have to scroll down to settings, then press the center button here. And now scroll over. To all settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan for channels. If we scroll down here to broadcasting, then we select that. Press the center button again, and we go through auto program to find the channels. So press auto program. And we want to press the start to auto program. We have to have our over the air um, wine guard uh, turned on. And once that's on, then we're going to scan for air channels. Yes. And it'll go through the scan and it'll show us how many channels it found. Thirty nine channels. So we can either scan again or we can go to our different settings or just close. You'll have to scan the same way uh, with the WineGuard antenna off if you want to watch the cable channels. So if you want to scan for cable, turn the over-the-air antenna off and then scan again for your cable channels if you have part cable available and want to watch cable. Now we should be able to connect with a channel here. Yes. To go back to the home screen and scan for cable, scroll left, back to settings, to the right, all settings, broadcasting, auto program, And this time, we want to, we're plugged into cable. We've turned our over the air 
uh, wine guard off, and now we can scan for the cable channels. Obviously, since we are not plugged into cable, we won't pick up any, but that's how you would scan for the cable. And you'll have to scan for channels for each TV location, whether it's out here or in the bedroom. So when you're finished watching television, you want to store the TV away, just go to your home screen, go to Systems, TV Lift, Down, and that retracts. And you want to make sure that that TV is in the stowed or stored down position when you travel. Next, we're going to look at the sofa. It folds out into a sleeper. So the way you do that is you remove the cushions. Reach back, pull forward, and up and out. Extend the legs. and then put the seat back down and that folds into a bed. Just do the reverse of that, lift it up to store it back and make it back into a sofa. Now you have your sofa back. This motion sensor can be turned on or off here. Here, the green LED light comes on when it's on. This is the motion sensor, which will automatically turn your lights on or off. There's another pop-up plug here, 120 volt. You have cabinet space here with a drawer. You have your Samsung tablet here that you can connect to your coach and Wi-Fi. With every Numar coach, you get the black case with all of your paperwork to register your warranties and it outlines uh, all the paperwork that you need to turn in for your appliances, including plumbing, heating, air conditioning, exterior, and electrical, along with your operating instructions for your coach, whether that's a Freightliner or Spartan. Make sure that you turn in that warranty paperwork and review warranty paperwork and turn those in to start your warranty. On the inside of the cabinets, you'll notice the decals for the colors and some important notices uh, about the country club and what the vehicle design and the range hood use, power vents. And please review those. Moving over, this is the microwave cover. If you reach your hand underneath, you'll feel a small plastic uh, opening device. Just press up. This is the opening device here. And then you have your microwave here. To close this, um, well, before we close it, you have your 120 volt plug outlet for that. This is the motor that opens and closes when you press this device. In the event that the power motor doesn't open the cabinet, you can grab a hold of it and just lift it up manually or close it. There's another 120 volt plug outlet here. The lighting controls 
For this area and the rest of the coach are here, they work the same as the other ones. You have your cooktop. On the back side of that cover, you have your cutting boards. On both. To operate your induction cooktop, You'll have to have your coach plugged in or the generator on. When that happens, you'll see it powers up in the LED displays here. So when you first power up your induction cooktop, it's going to be locked. You'll have to hold your finger on the lock for about three to four seconds. And you'll hear a beep. Now it's unlocked. So now we can turn it on or off. And we can change the settings here or here. Right now they're all off because you don't have anything here. You don't have any pan setting here to operate so it won't actually turn on in heat because it works through induction. So once the cooktop has cooled off and you're done using it, you'll probably want to hit the lock button again. So hold down the lock button for three to four seconds. Now it's locked. After it's cooled off, you can take your cutting boards, covers, make sure that the rounded corners are on the outside corners, not the inside center, and just set those in place. The sink has covers center and ends. It has a storage compartment for the covers here. You can see that you can slip the covers in here and that locks them into place. So you can take all three and just set them here. And since we have this open, this is more storage, and we have a trash receptacle here. In the back is just our P-trap, and you'll see the extension for the faucet is here. On the other side, there's another drawer. kitchen silverware. When you get your coach initially, you're going to have the tools and the remote controls in this drawer. This is your extra Wi-Fi router because with this coach, it came with the Starlink, but since you already have the router, that receives those signals and transmits it in your coach, so you wouldn't need a second one, but it comes with the Starlink. So we include it. There is touch-up paint in here for your coach here, and all of your controls, remotes, for your Bose speakers and your televisions, along with your sofa baton. It, this is your fireplace control for the bedroom. We'll show that a little bit later. And this is for your air mattress control, and we'll also show that, how to operate that, a little bit later. So this cabinet drawer contains the dishwasher. The way you unlock it is you knock on the outside. So to unlock the drawer to access the dishwasher, you just knock on it three times. And it 
unlocks. You'll hear the tone when it unlocks and your settings for whichever cycle, heavy, medium, or delicate, or just rinse, you can change those here. And then close to start the cycle. You have additional drawer space here. Louvers are for the heat. And you have your dual zone refrigerator for wine cooling on both sides. At the top, you can control the temperature for either side, and you can change those settings to be different from the other side. So you can see now what the temperature is, and you can change those settings here. Or if you wanna turn this side off, you just press the off button here, and you can turn the entire unit off. At the bottom of each door, there's a keyway so that when you close the door, before you travel, you lock each one to keep that door from opening during travel. Lock the door, you close it, insert the key, and then rotate it to lock. Now the door is locked. To lock this one, you have to do the same thing. Insert, turn to lock this door. For this cabinet, you can either open and close it manually, but if you want it to soft close, you can push it and then open it. And then this device will help it. When it closes, it won't slam close. It's the same on both sides. Across from the television here in the living room, you've got your theater seating. A theater seating has the footrest and tilt on the first selection on the left. So if you press that, that will actuate the seat to lean back and put the footrest up. If you want to retract it, the button right beside it retracts a little bit or completely. There's the heat waves on the center position, and that's for a heating the seat. So you can press that one, and you see the red glow would be seat heat. If you want vibration for the seat in addition to the heat, you can turn that on at the same time and you get a gentle vibration on your back. The lighting switch changes it to blue. If you don't want lighting to blue and you want your heat and vibration off, just turn the vibration off and the heat off, and that's your cup holder. Same on the other side. There is a storage compartment here, along with a 120-volt outlet and two charging ports here for your devices. In your drop ceiling are the vents for the air conditioning and heat pump. So your cool or warm air is gonna come out of the vents on the driver's side, but on the passenger side going all the way down in each one of these drop ceilings and in the bedroom, there's a filter underneath here. So this is your return air filter. And these are your discharge vents. You'll need to use the tool that Numar provides to remove the panel to get to the filter. So you insert, turn, put your hand here and pull down. Once you've got it loose, you'll need to move it over to an opening that's a little bit wider than the wood itself. And then you'll need to direct it out. You'll see the filters on the back. This is just Velcroed on, so you can just remove that filter. You can blow the dust off and then wash it with warm soapy water, rinse it, and then let it air dry. After it's clean, you can just insert it back in. The Velcro will hold it in place. And these magnets will hold the entire assembly when we put it back up.
the magnets will catch here a little bit if you're letting them touch, but then you just move it over by hand, insert it, and push up. Now the magnets will hold. It is a tight fit, but that makes sure that the magnets won't release um, as you're in transit. And that needs to be done again in the mid drop ceiling and in the rear bedroom the same way to clean those filters. Keep those filters clean for the best performance for heating. So we've moved over into the dinette area and the table can actually be extended. There are additional two leaves that you can put in the table as you pull it out. You can add those in the back. You want to make sure that the steel alignment is matched up with the other steel. Line up those. And then once those are lined up, you can push the table back together to close the gap. That gives you more space. There's another one that you can add. Once you add that, you'll have additional room for a third or fourth person at your table. There's another chair that you can add if you wanted to put them on either side. When you're done and you want to retract the table, these chairs can be put back underneath the bed lift. Pull the table out. Loosen the leaf and lift it out. After you remove the leaf, you can retract the table. Just push in to close. On both sides of the seating, you'll see a small recess here. That's a handle you can grab and you can pull this out. You'll have additional storage space in, in both drawers on both sides. In the back center, you'll notice there are two doors. You can reach back underneath and open these. And you'll see there's an access panel. That's for your water line. There is a lighting control here at the dinette so you can control your lighting functions in this area or the rest of the coach here. Moving into the kitchen refrigerator area, you have your Viking tri-door refrigerator. The door lock mechanism is situated in the center here. It's a locking mechanism that Numar adds, and it has to be in the lock position so the doors don't open in transit. So right now it's locked. To unlock it after you come to your destination, you want to open the refrigerator, just press the door lock to the right. Now our doors will be free to open. Inside the refrigerator, are the touch panel controls at the top. The on off is here at the left. Quick cool and temperature settings here or quick freeze. If you get an alarm, you can turn it off here. So turn it on. And we have light and now we can change uh, to quick cool or other settings just by depressing these buttons here. The water filter for your refrigerator is up here. If you'd like to change that, just drop this down. The directions for changing it are there. And this is your water filter box. You insert your filter here. After you insert it, then you would close this door. And it, lat it latches when you push it forward. The water dispenser for the refrigerator, cold water, is not on the outside doors. It's actually inside here. So you would take your cup, press it here to dispense cold water here. When you're, if you leave your doors open for a minute or two, you're gonna see the flashing light. That's just a warning that you've left your doors open and you'll hear the chime. When you're ready to travel, you just close the doors and remember you wanna put 
the lock towards the left so that all the doors are locked. So beside the refrigerator, you have your walk-in pantry uh, with a pocket door. If you'd like this to be closed off, just unlock the pantry door and close it. Otherwise, leave it locked. As you walk into the pantry, the cabinet doors just push forward and then you can open or open manually. There's additional storage here. There's a lighting control panel here for the lighting inside here. On the back side, there's a door that you can't grab a hold of, so you have to push to open for additional storage down below. Up above, press to open. This is your appliance garage. There is an additional 120 volt outlet here that you press to release. Now you can plug those appliances in this compartment. Push to store it away if you're not using it. There is additional storage up here. So we brought our, our InterVac accessory pack inside and it's got all the accessories along with the hose so you can use your vacuum that's here or at the floor level. If you pull this up, the vacuum turns on and you can sweep here. That's off or you can put your attachments here. So. You've got your warning label, you remove that. This just tells you to make sure you have your bag in the vacuum, which is in the luggage compartment, the fourth door back on the passenger side. If we open our bag, we have our accessories here, and we wanna connect the end of the hose Again, you get the same warning with the yellow tag to make sure that you have your dust bag installed in the power unit downstairs. When you have that ready installed, then you just push and to turn it on and off is the small on off switch right here at the top. So we press that, turns on, press it again to turn off. If you need information on the battery that's in here that turns it on and off or anything else about the operation or the appliance, you can scan the QR code and go to their website for more information. When you're done sweeping in the coach with your accessories, you just open this and remove. When you store this back in the bag, you want to make sure that this handle doesn't get caught up against some hard object like this, it might turn it on inadvertently in transit or storage. So once we put this back in the bag, then we can put our handle back in, make sure our handle's up near the top, out of the way and then we can zip it closed and put it back in the baggage compartment. This touch panel screen illuminates when you touch it. You'll see all of the silver leaf icons around the outside. Whenever you depress one of those selections, whether it's lights, coach mode, batteries, or home screen, it will display that in the center of the screen. So if I choose lighting, for instance, now I can turn my lighting on or off when I select those areas of the coach. Kitchen, for instance, all lights off or all lights on, all lights on. If I wanna go back and see the main screen, I can do that, just hit the back button. This is the home screen, which shows our tank levels, 
house battery percentage charge, state of charge, and chassis batteries, which is not state of charge, but actual voltage, DC. You can see they're bridged, so the house batteries are bridged to the chassis batteries right now to help those charge one to the other. You have the AC selection we can make here into, you can view your inverter one and two, whether they're on or you can turn them off. If they're on but not being needed, they'll go into standby. For our DC power, that's just going to show us our batteries. Our batteries, our temperature here of the batteries, the state of charge here. Their chargers are right now in standby. You can see charger one and charger two both in standby. Uh, there's history for solar, uh, which is your solar panel on the roof. Our generator can be turned on and off here. Our water shows fresh, black, and gray. We can turn our water pump on and off or our autofill or top off. Our climate screen is set to all zones. So when I make selections here to the temperature, it's going to control all the zones for heating or cooling. If I choose cool, that's going to be my rooftop air conditioners. If I choose heat, that's going to be my heat pumps unless I turn, in, turn on my Oasis. My Oasis is my burner and or electric elements that gives me heat for hot water and heat for air in the coach. So if I want my burner on, I press this button. If I want it off, I press that. If I want the elements on or off, I just press those. Heat source right now is set to automatic, so it chooses heat pump or the Oasis burner for heating. If I want to change that, I can just go to heat pump only or Oasis, ITR Oasis, hydronic heat only, or both on. Sometimes it's advantageous to have both on because it heats up the coach faster. If I'm just wanting a little bit of hot water, I can turn on one heating element. But if I need more, I can turn them both on. If you're going to need heat in the water bay compartment, we suggest not turning the elements on, but making sure the burner's on so that you have enough heat available to keep those compartments warm in the wintertime and adequate showers. So if you like to take long, hot showers, leave your burner on. If you take Short showers, you just need a few minutes of hot water, then your elements will probably keep up. Or if you just need hot water to do the dishes. Block heater, that just preheats your engine. Our batteries, again, showing state of charge. You have lithium batteries in this coach. There's two of them. They're 1260 amp hours each, one on the left side of the coach, one on the right, and both of them have a BMS that controls the operation of that battery. And there's additional information here. If we go into coach mode, it gives you different selections that you can make, whether you're outdoor and not plugged in, outdoor and plugged in, or indoor unplugged, meaning short cord not plugged in, or indoor plugged in, and so that makes it easier for you to set the settings for your inverters and generators or AGS. Let's say I'm indoors, but I'm plugged in. Then I would select that one and it shows me what's turned on. I have to hit activate to turn these on, but it helps me choose the best or desirable chargers. And I'm disabling my auto gen because why? If I'm indoors, I wouldn't want the generator to come on. That would cause, that would cause uh, exhaust fumes inside the building. So this kind of helps you or protects you. It helps you make your decisions when you activate. It turns the ones on that you should have on when you're indoor and unplugged. Floor heat is just a zone front mid or rear. We can turn those on just by scrolling up or down. 
It doesn't actually set a temperature, but it turns on the floor heat by time cycles. So the lower settings have shorter on cycles. If I go up to a, a higher setting or higher number, like 10, then it will stay on longer. It doesn't actually set your room or coach to a certain temperature. It just stays on for longer periods of time. So you have to adjust it to where you feel comfortable. Going over to awnings, I can control my awnings here. Vent fans, same way, kitchen, master bath, or storeroom, turn them on. Turn the one on here in the kitchen. Kitchen, and you can hear them opening. I can turn the fan on to high, medium, or low. If there's a, a little rain going on outside, but you still want the vent on, you can hit the rain sensor override. That ensures that it will come on. If there is a slight bit of rain and you don't have this turned on, the fan will probably not come on. Moving over to our door locks, we can toggle them on or off. Same with our shades. We can choose the area we want the shades to open or close, and we can open and close our shades. Same with our TV lift and our lighting we talked about earlier. At the very top corner, there's an icon here and you can scroll through these pages. There's two, three, four pages that you can scroll through and you can then dial into, let's say I need to set my clock. I would press set clock. I can change dates and times. Let's say I wanted to see my lithium battery status. I can just press there. That shows the same screen we saw earlier. If I want to dim this, uh, let's say it was later in the evening and I didn't want it to be this bright. I can dim it out slightly or completely. And that's how the basics of this touch screen for Silverleaf works. You can refer to your owner's manual for more information. Below that, we have our temperature sensor for this zone or this part of the coach. This would be the second or the uh, number two zone. This controls the HVAC settings for furnace or heat pump or cooling. So moving into the half bath now, we'll push and pull up to open the door. It folds back and over. And as we go into the bathroom, we've got our two large cabinet doors and behind we have our controls and our fuses for our sub panels and 12 volt appliances and 120 volt. So on the left side, all of these fuses are labeled here. So if we have an appliance, for instance, that we see our patio light, for instance, is not working on the coach, we can look at the label, it's labeled F4, and then we would go to that fuse F4 here and we'd pull that fuse to check it. If we pull that fuse and we see that it's no longer connected, it's blown, we'll need to change it. We have new fuses here. We'd pick the same amperage and put it back to replace the old one, throw the old one away. That's how you check your appliances for the 12 volt. If you look at the bottom here, these are a little bit different type of fuse than the ones above. These are resettable fuses. So to reset those, you just press the center of either one and that resets those two fuses. On the top is your inverter panel two and one, number, or number one and two. The number two inverter controls your middle air conditioner, the bed, bath, basement, refrigerator, and the beverage center. The beverage center is the one in the kitchen for the wine. The inverter two controls your front air conditioner, driver side slide out microwave and passenger side slide out. So if any of these are tripped or down, that appliance will not work. You can turn them off if you choose, 
If they trip, you'll need to come in here, turn them all the way off, and then back up to turn that appliance back on because a tripped breaker doesn't actually go all the way down when it's tripped. It only goes about half of the way down. You have to make it go down and then back up to reset it. To reset the GFCI for the floor heat, you come in here and you can reset either one for the floor heat in number two or one zone. The GFCI circuit here can be reset here. Moving over to the 120 volt panel. All of the appliances are listed here on both sides for what they control. If any of these are to the outside, those appliances will not work. So if I have these to the outside, the floor heat and the pressure washer are not going to operate. I can turn them on and they'll work. If they trip from over amperage or short, I can reset them, but they won't trip like we talked about earlier. They won't actually trip all the way over to the, the right They'll only trip about halfway. So then I'll have to take and manually push it all the way over to the outside and then back to reset it if it trips by itself. So as you enter the bedroom, you'll see a pocket door here. This is locked in the open position. To unlock it and close the door, you have to push down here. That unlocks it. And then you can. Close it. As you get to about halfway, it starts to pull. And then it locks in the closed position. To unlock it and stow it back, you have to push down again the same way. Unlock. And then it will relock in the open position. And that's how we want it for travel. This is a room sensor for the bedroom and rear bath. This is the rear zone HVAC sensor. Lights, nightstand, and charger for your phone. Nightstand storage below. Touch panel for your lighting and Shades, fans, and all systems are here. The window on the side on each end for the nightshade, those are manual. So to pull those nightshades down, you have to pull those manually. The one on the head of the bed, which is the dark shade, that's electric. Above the bed, you have more storage here. 120 volt outlet there. There is an opening here for your CPAP machine if you need it to bring that down through the cabinet so you can store the CPAP machine up here. And on the opposite side of the bed, there's another lighting control there. The same type of nightstand here with the charger. If you put your phone there, that will charge. And storage compartment underneath that nightstand. The bed underneath has a storage area. We talked about it a little bit earlier for the table extension in the dinette. And for the chairs at the dinette, you just reach under the bed and lift up. And you can see your chair and your table extensions are here. There is also room for additional storage. You'll notice an air mattress pump there for the bed and the remote control is this for left and right control 
you can change the firmness of the mattress with that air pump. So starting in the bedroom here on the back wall, you've got your in out for your slide room control. That's for the bedside. You have your touch panel here. This mirror images the touch pad that's near the half bath. Exact same screen. Below that, you have your room sensor for turning off your lights on and off. This is the sensor. They'll come on if you have this turned on. You have your audio visual cabinet here. You have Blu-ray DVD connections or satellite roof mount connections there along with 120 volt outlets to um, put your DVD players here or your satellite receivers. And this is exclusively for the bedroom TV. On the other side, you have more cabinet space here. And this is the motion sensor for the uh, security system. Down below here, we have our fireplace. Uh, the fireplace is controlled either with the remote or manually here. There are additional drawers here in the bottom. 120 volt outlet here. Press it down again to store it. And an additional 120 volt outlet at the bottom of the, on the rear wall. On your ceiling in the bedroom is a CO2 detector, not a smoke detector, but it works in the same way. It has an LED light that comes on. If we press and hold, we'll get the signal, the beep. That's to test it. That's the series of tones you would hear if the CO2 detector was detecting carbon dioxide. If you don't hear that tone or you don't see the LED light flash, you'd want to check the nine volt battery. Just squeeze together and pull down the nine volt batteries here. You can replace the battery. After you replace it, then you just want to put that back in place and then retest, make sure that it's going to sound your, your alarm. The air filtration is the same that we saw in the kitchen. The same tool is used to remove these louvers. Once the louver is removed, you'll be able to turn it over, remove the filter, wash it, and let it air dry and then put it back because this is another area for your rear air conditioner um, discharge air for heating and cooling and these are the filters for return air. Moving into the rear bath, there's a pocket door here. This pocket door works just like the other one you, except you push up to unlock rather than push down. Close, it locks, pull up to unlock, and it locks into place for travel. As you enter the bathroom, you'll see the double doors here. These are for your washer and dryer. The washer and dryer controls are at the top, on and off and selection for dryness, open and close here. There's a notice on the washing machine just to remind you that you want to have your gate valve open for your gray tank so that it drains out of the gray tank while it's washing your clothes. That way it won't completely fill up the gray tank and overflow into your shower. So make a note of that. You want to make sure to keep your gray tank gate valve open. 
pull it towards you when you're doing your laundry or your washing machine is on. This access door can be opened and here we have the hot and cold spigots that we can turn off and on for the washing machine. We have the plug for the dryer and this is for the washer. Just below that we have the Dometic flush control. This flush control has two buttons that you can use to fill more water into the bowl or flush. As long as there's power indicated here, you'll be able to do that. If you see an LED light come on here where it says tank level, if this comes on yellow or amber, that means your tank's about 75% full. But if it's red, your black tank is completely full and you'll have to go and empty that black tank before you'll be able to flush the toilet here. There's an exit door here. This exit door is an emergency exit. If you need to get out of the coach and you can't go towards the front, you would unlock the door here. If it's in the lock position, that's locked. This is unlocked, so unlock it here and unlock here. Then you'll be able to pull the handle, unlock here, pull the handle, and you'll be able to open the door. There's a ladder that's built into this panel, so you want to remove this panel. And then open the door completely, pull the Velcro release off. release the Velcro that holds the ladder in place, and then just tilt the ladder down, and it will extend all the way to the ground. Now I can step over and exit out of the coach. To stow the emergency ladder, you just lift up, And then you lift up one more time, stow it, and then our Velcro will hold it in place. And we take our panel, put it back in place, and close the door. So after the door is closed, you'll come back in and you can lock the deadbolt and the handle here so you won't be able to enter from the outside. You'll notice here on the back wall of the bathroom there's another room temperature sensor for your HVAC controls. There's more storage here and a safe. The safe key and lock code are in your black case. So you can open that and you'll find all the information on your safe. More storage there. Louvers are for heating. 120 volt outlet. Motion detector for lighting. touch panel for lighting controls, and more drawer space here. The sink control for each one of these is on and off, and left is warm, right is cold. The vanity mirrors open this way. More 120 volt plug here. 
drawers here. And we have our lighting controls behind this panel that's uh, smoked glass. More shelves here for storage here. And you've got your satellite and DVD connections here. So we have additional drawer space here. And the louvers here are for heating and return air on both sides. You'll notice here you've got an engine cover. The engine cover can be removed by removing the black plugs and screws and the panel in the front. Then this could be lifted out to get access to the engine for service. For the shower and the shower controls and the door here is locked. So if we want to access the shower, we have to unlock to open. That's for travel and that's for when it's in use. Inside the shower, you've got your overhead, your hand wand, temperature controls, and you've got your um, settings for your wand on the left and the overhead on the right. And you've got your temperature sensor here, which will tell you when the water is warm enough to take your shower. This can be turned on so the sensor tells you when the water is warm enough to use. The water is recycled back into the fresh water tank when it's still cold, but once this turns red, then you will be able to turn this from recycle back to the left to take your shower. So when this is still blue, you're going to be recycling or recirculating. Then when this turns red, we move it over here and then we can select the shower position we want and the temperature, then the water will be warm right away. This just saves water so that you don't use a lot of water up before the temperature gets up hot enough to take your shower. If you leave this in the recycling position and the city water is on, the water will continue to fill into the fresh water tank and overflow. So when you're done with your shower recirculating, you always want to turn that back to the left, especially when you're winterizing. So at the top of the shower in the corner, we've got our body wash conditioner and shampoo dispensers, and those can be refilled. Down here, we have our seat. When we're done with the shower, we just want to make sure that the door is closed and locked for travel. We're on the outside front of the King Air on the passenger side, and we're going to open the generator slide to access the generator slide switch. It's a rocker switch, and you you can see the word extend here, so press extend. Keep your foot clear of that. That moves all in one piece. As we make our way into the generator slide area, working our way over, you'll see you have your windshield wiper wash solution. This is your filter for your ITR Oasis. These are your street horns and of course your generator. Your generator has the start stop switch here. The breaker switch for power inside is here. This has to be turned on or up in the on position in order for the power in the generator to make its way in the coach. So if this is tripped, you'll have to reset it into the on position. The access cover here can be removed to change the filters and service the generator. And to fill the oil level, the fluid level for the coolant is here. 
There is a Hobbs meter here that keeps track of the hours that the generator is running. To start the generator, we just push down and hold that switch and that would start. And then to stop, we just press the opposite direction. These are your air horns here. And moving over to this side of the generator, you've got your HWH pump. The HWH pump is what operates your steps, your generator slide, and your full wall slide rooms with the hydraulic fluid pump. There's a reservoir tank, and the reservoir tank holds the fluid and those fluids can be checked by removing this cap and you can check your level here. If it's low, just add transmission fluid, refer to your owner's manual for the right kind. It needs to be checked with the jacks up and the slide outs open. Just above the generator is your HVAC system for heating and cooling inside the cockpit area. Your mirrors can be adjusted here on the side front, on the side and front here. If you loosen these Allen head screws, you can tilt and adjust the mirror if there's not enough, uh, if there's not enough play uh, when you use the switch. You can move this mirror or you can move the arm you can rotate the arm this way by removing this plug, <clears throat> loosening the nut, and then adjust it to where you need, and then retighten it. You'll notice in the center of the windshield, there's the mobile eye. The mobile eye is displayed in your glass dash in the center top for your lane change assist and warnings. If you look at the top of your cap here in the front, you'll see your camera, your front camera, marker lights. And we're gonna demonstrate the marker lights and turn signals for you here. But first we're gonna close the generator slide. It operates the same way going closed. It's the same rocker switch that you use to extend it. Just open your front door and push in the opposite direction to close your generator slide. So I've turned on my marker lights here, and then I can turn my fog lights on, and I can go bright, dim. That's my right turn signal left turn, bright, or fog lights. This is fog lights off. This is our emergency flashers. So we've moved to the door side of the coach and at the corner here we see we have a reflector and this is part of the lane change uh, warning system that appears as a triangle in your mirror. So I'm gonna make sure that's clear. There's three of these on the side going back. It helps you when you're making a lane change. Uh, it warns you if there's anything in the lane. At the top of the entrance door, we have your Girard awning. Girard awnings are uh, remotely controlled with this remote. Uh, you can control them from the inside, as we talked about earlier, either in the overhead, uh, right above the door, or above the driver's uh, steering. To operate this, it's uh, pretty simple. Each awning is designated a channel. This is channel three. The next one, the large one, is channel, let's turn that on so you can see, this one is channel three. If we hit out, that awning will come out. That's your door awning. We can turn the lights on, the LED lights.
and it stops automatically. So if we want to turn the lights out, we can turn them off, back on, and then of course we can just stow it by going in. The next awning over is number one patio awning. So if we go to channel number one, we can hit the same out and that awning will go out. We can hit our LED lights. We can stop it at any point in time just by hitting the stop or we can go out, continue out. The patio awnings all stop automatically, so you don't need to stop them manually with the remote. So after it's fully extended, it has a sensor. Uh, if the sensor, like if, if the wind picked up, there's a sensor on the awning if the awning moved enough, it would automatically close. I'll show you how that works. And that protects your awning in high wind conditions. You want to make sure that if it's heavy rain or high wind conditions, just stow the awning away. You don't want to leave your awning out uh, in bad or inclement weather. The rear awning, patio awning, like this one, works exactly the same. The rear awning is channel two, and if I go to channel two, I can turn the lights on and off on that awning I won't open it because we've got a pillar there and that's another good point. Before you open your awnings, just make sure you're clear of any trees or branches or any object outside, posts, poles. There is a, an emergency awning rod that you can insert at the top of the awnings if you're on the roof and as you rotate the rod the awnings will close or open. So in case you lose power, you could actually manually close or open either one of these awnings. If we open the entrance door, we have to be away from the front area here because the steps are gonna uh, extend. So there's three steps. So you wanna be on this side and open the door. and your steps will come out. There is a safety feature in case there was something in the way. There's a rubber uh, sensor here. If the step touches uh, something, it will stop uh, wherever it hits that. There's also a curb sensor on the step. So if, if the step hits something on the bottom and it lifted it up, there's sensor switches that will also stop the step. The steps always come out with the door when it opens unless we press the step switch override switch in the overhead. So I'll demonstrate that right now if I close the door the steps will close or open, now open up, but I'm going to go in and hit the override switch. Now the steps will stay open. That just makes it a little easier so you can go in and out once you're parked without having the steps go in and out every time the door opens. In the event that you had an issue where 
the steps weren't working, but you wanted to override the switches in the door that work magnetically, you can use the step override switch, which is right here. If I press that step override switch, you can see that the steps will extend. So with your keys, you're, you're going to get a key fob that will lock and unlock the door. It won't unlock the deadbolt, but we're going to show you how it works. The door lock and unlock are here at the top. So that's lock and unlock for your entrance door. The baggage doors are just below it. So your, all of your baggage doors will unlock or lock at the same time. So that's unlock, lock. To operate the deadbolt, you'll need to either use the key from the outside, or you'll need to lock it manually or unlock it manually from the inside with the door closed. You want to make sure that this deadbolt is not extended or locked when you close the door, or that will break off. So that is lock and unlock. To unlock the door from the outside, if the door was locked, so I'll lock it. Just take your key. That's unlock and lock. So unlock, I can open the handle. Lock is lock. When I close the door, there's two latches that this goes into here. There's a first catch and a second. So if I close the door softly, it's in the first latch. And that's what you could do if you were parked at a campground. You just wanted to close the door softly and have it closed. That's fine. You can do that. It's just not totally flush with the outside edge here. And I wouldn't want to travel that way. So when I want to travel and I don't want any air noise and I want a good seal at my door for safety as well, I have to close the door firmly. So that is completely closed into the second latch. So just make sure before you travel that you're closing it firmly going into the second latch. The door handle of course, is used to assist you to go in and out of the coach. There's a doorbell here. So you can ring the doorbell. You can hear it. When you get your coach, the code that you'll use to unlock the door is 123441. And that will unlock the door. You can hear if our door is locked. And I do that. One, two, three, four. Four, one, the door unlocks. If I close the door and I want to lock it, I just need to press the number one for a second and it locks the door and sets the alarm. When I unlock the door, I'm pressing one, two, three, four, four, one. If I want to unlock the baggage compartments, I can press one, two, three, four, four, two. And, and that unlocks both. There's a video camera just below the door handle. If you if you want to set up your own code, which you should do when you get your coach and take ownership, on the, on the side of the steering column is a reset switch for the Trimark system and this lock. You'll need to depress that. You'll hear a tone outside and you'll need to enter your new code twice. Uh, just refer to your Trimark owner's manual for more information on that. But to make your code, entrance code private and not the standard one uh, that you receive on a new coach, 
uh, we recommend that you change your code. A special feature on the King Air is the passive keyless entry. So as long as my key fob is in my pocket or in my hand, if I come up to the door and it senses in the handle that I'm going to open it, so it actually unlocks it so I don't have to do it manually. So it will unlock and then I can just open the door. So in the event that the door awning was not operating, whether it was power failure or motor failure, in your coach you have this um, manual awning uh, retract or extend, and you insert that in the end of the awning here, and then just turn, and that will open or close the awning. In addition to using this uh, manual awning uh, open and close for your door awning, you can actually use this to connect to your lanyards in the front wheel well here to remove the moisture out of the air system. There's three lanyards with loops. If I reach this back, I want to grab a hold of the silver lanyard and pull it first to get the moisture out of my air system. And then I want to go ahead and grab the other two and get the air out of those. You want to do that daily as you're using your coach to make sure there's no moisture in your air system um, for braking and other reasons. So moving back behind the front wheel well, you've got your fuel door for your diesel fuel. That diesel fuel fills into the main tank from either side of the coach. You've got your marker lights, docking lights. You got your living room window and your awning uh, for your window. So that's your window awning and above the window awning, you've got your slide topper awning, which covers the slide out when it's in the out position. First bay door, in our first baggage door going back, press and the door releases. It's a soft close, so then after it releases, you can just open it up. And this, of course, is just our storage area here. You don't need to slam the door when you close it, just softly close and it pulls it tight. And our next door back, same way, press, it releases and opens for you. Then you just move it to the side. So in this compartment, we have a tray that opens up here with a door switch. It's electrically operated. So you'd be able to stow your items in here and then run it in. When you get your coach new, it comes with uh, extra tile in case you need to replace one of your interior tile. These tiles come from the same lot number, so they'll match in color. Numar also includes an airline that you can connect to your accessory air connections in the front or the back where, where they're at so that you can inflate your tires or other inflatables. There's additional tile here. These tile are matching the ones in your coach and they also come from the same lot number, so they'll match in color. So when you're ready to stow this, we just Push on the retract.
and then just close the door softly and it will latch automatically. Just above that door, we have our outside entertainment center. The entertainment center uh, is open, but we can lock it or leave it unlocked, whichever you like. You have your TV, your Bose speaker, and additional USB outlets, 120 volt outlets. We have our Bose speaker selection. So if we wanna use this speaker for the television sound, we can choose the TV on the left. If we wanna use the Bose speaker for the radio inside, we'll have to turn the Excite radio to house mode and then the radio will play outside. If I want to move the TV out and rotate it towards your seating, we can do that. We can rotate it whichever way out further. And then to stow it, we want to put it back and push it in place. We have another slide tray by Easy Glide. In this tray, you'll notice we have these threaded rods. Uh, this set is for your uh, shorter slide out. This one's for your longer slide out. These are used in the event that you had a problem or issue with the HWH slide out not retracting. These uh, would use, uh, be used for a manual retraction uh, just refer to your owner's manual on how to use those if that were to occur, but keep those in your coach. When you're done storing things in this area, just close the tray. And soft close the door. In our next compartment, we have our basement refrigerator freezer by Dometic and our inner vac accessories that we saw earlier inside the coach. These accessories can be used outside by connecting the hose here, and then we'll be able to use the inner vac system manual. You can turn it on right here. To access the items that you might have in your refrigerator freezer, just lift here and pull the tray out. Your Dometic refrigerator freezer can be controlled here. Uh, it also has uh, available Bluetooth connection, so you can connect to your refrigerator freezer on your phone. Just refer to the Dometic manual to see how to do that. In behind the freezer, you have your Oasis ITR. The Oasis ITR is your hydronic heat for the hot water and your heat for heat inside the coach. The, you can see the green LED light is on at the top and that needs to be on in order to control the silver leaf panel from the inside. So. Basically, that's just the power light that tells you it's powered up and ready to operate. The lights, LEDs below that uh, would be green until the bottom four. If you see any that are red on the bottom ones, the bottom four, those are faults. And so you would have to get a hold of your servicing center and have them look at that. If you need to reset the system, there is a reset button on the bottom right. Up at the top, you have your control systems for the ITR Oasis fans. And those fans and relays are inside of that silver box. It also controls the pumps inside of there. These lights, when they come on, should be green. If you see any of those that are red, it's the same type of situation that you, if you see red lights there, 
that's a fault and there are fuses behind that panel you can remove that front face panel check the fuse if the fuse is good you'll need to go to your servicing dealer just to the right side of that are your, is your camera controls and here you've got your oasis rvc node which connects this to your rvc network so you can control it with your touch panel on the on the back wall here you'll see that the cord from the basement freezer goes down they plug in here you've got 12 volt and 120 volt for the freezer so you want to plug those in so that the freezer can operate on either 12 volt or 120 volt there's an additional plug here 120 volt when you're done accessing this compartment you just manually close it In our next compartment, we have uh, additional storage. You can use this for storage for really anything, tools, cleaners, uh, anything that you'd like to put in here. This is the uh, place that a lot of guys will put in uh, accessories for cleaning their coach or working on other things around the house. In our next compartment back, this door opens up, so you want to be sure there's nothing in the way here. So when you press to unlock it, you'll hear it unlock, but it doesn't pop open or pop up. You have to grab a hold of it and lift. In this compartment, you have your inverters. Your inverters are what converts the 120 volts from the batteries, which these are the batteries, so that you can have power for your refrigerator, microwave, and any other appliances in the coach that are on the sub panel. There are small mini breakers here on both inverters. If you notice that the mini breaker is out you'll need to push it in to reset it the operating lights on the left side of both of these can be seen with your phone if you take a picture of it you'll be able to see if it is on or off or has a fault you can reset it by pressing the button here on the left this is your battery management system and when this is turned on you'll see the blue LED light on the outside, it's constant, just like the one on the inside in the overhead. So this just mirror images the one on the inside. If this one is flashing, it's not really turned on, you would need to press it and hold it until it comes on. If it's completely out, it is also off, and you would have to press and turn it on until the light illuminates solid blue if you do that check your status of the battery charge if it's at 10 percent which it would typically be if you had to turn it back on you'll need to turn your generator on or plug the coach in because you're at your last 10 percent state of charge in the battery and you don't want to take that battery down to zero so be sure and plug your coach into shore power or turn your generator on and make sure that your inverters are enabled. So your charger inverters are enabled on your Silverleaf panel. Make sure they're turned on, not in standby mode or off so that they will charge the battery. Inside of this compartment, there is some heat buildup and Numar exhausts the heat out of this compartment through the bottom of the door. So when the door is closed, you may feel air coming out of the bottom of the door, which is right here, because the dual fans are pulling air out of the compartment. The air is going through the inside of the door and then out. Whenever this compartment is at 90 degrees or warmer, 
these fans will be operating. When you open the door, they automatically come off, but that's what the fans are for. So we don't wanna get anything in the way of these fans moving. So make sure they stay clear so that it exits the heat out of this compartment. If you need to access this door, but you can't open it, and you need to turn the BMS on from the outside, there's an emergency release handle here. So if you pull this, it will release this door so that you can turn your battery management on so you have power in the coach. So you have your uh, marker light here and your lane uh, warning assist here that appears in your mirror. Before you travel, even though you may have stored your jacks, your HWH jacks are up and it shows that they're up on your touch pad, you still would want to visually check and inspect in between the wheels here and make sure that that jack has actually retracted before you travel. Just behind the rear wheels, we have a small access door. This one is for your DEF. You need to keep that filled up. Just open, fill, close. In the event that you could not air up your coach, you can air up your coach manually here. These are labeled for each one of those uh, cup couplers. You just add the air there and it airs up those bags. In your last door on the door side of the coach, you've got your chassis batteries and your battery disconnects. The chassis batteries are only going to give you power in the coach if they're turned on here and here. So when you're storing the coach, you want these to be off. So that would be off and that would be off. When you're going to start the coach, you need to have these turned on and then the battery supply power to the front of the coach and all the accessories in the cockpit area. If any of those accessories aren't working, there's additional fuses here, as well as fuses in the up or the front compartment on the driver's side, but these are the ones in this compartment. You can turn that left and lift. This comes off and you can see on the inside of this back side all of the fuses are labeled here so if you had a failure of any one of those you can take your fuse removal pull that fuse out and there is spare fuses here when you're done put that back and put your cover back on just to, the, just to the left of your batteries, you've got your air dryer, you've got your fuel filter, and below that is the lever that you actuate to open up the rear engine compartment. It has to have enough air to open. So if I lift this up, I wanna make sure there's nobody standing in that area. to open it up. It works in reverse to close it. Don't, don't close it. We won't close it now because we uh, want to look in that area, but that's how you open it. You have to get into this compartment to open that rear compartment. So with our engine compartment door open, we can move in here to see what are the items we can service or turn on off our auxiliary air hose could be connected here. If we needed auxiliary air, we'd have to make sure that the engine had been on for a while so that we were aired up, so that we have air supply. Our engine coolant is here. We never want to remove this cap when the engine is warm or hot, but we can see the fill level is up because right now it's, it's the reddish color. If it's down, 
below halfway, we want to make sure, because that's full when it's cold, is right here. If it's coming down here, we want to fill this up to this level, at least so that it's all red when it's cold. Our engine oil fill is here. Engine dipstick for oil is here. Our hydraulic system oil dipstick is here. We can turn that and check our hydraulic oil. This is the block heater plug. As long as this is plugged in, we can preheat or start our engine uh, with it warm. If we turn on the block heater, making sure that's plugged in, uh, we turn the block heater on at the silver leaf panel inside. This is our air filter indicator. If the air filter is too dirty, starting to get clogged, this yellow diaphragm will go all the way up with the engine running and it will be in the red. That would tell you you need to replace uh, the air filter, which is in this canister here. Um, the air that comes into the engine goes through the filter from up on top, and we'll look at that where it comes in at in a minute. This is your uh, transmission fluid fill and dipstick here. Your ITR Oasis for your hydronic heat overflow bottle is here. We want to make sure that we keep this filled up to the cold level when it's cold. This is the cold level here, about midway. Fluid. The fluid that you would use for uh, re refilling is called century fluid. You can get that from Numar. When you're done in this compartment, you don't want to close it manually by hand. You want to go ahead and come back to this compartment here. and just push this lever down and that compartment door will close. Now, those are your brake lights turn signals. Emergency flashers. Parking lights. At the bottom here, we have our towing system. Uh, we have an additional connection here for a Voyager camera uh, for our trailer if we need it. The plug for towing for your marker lights, turn signals for your trailer. And then if you had an Air Force One system on your vehicle, uh, that would be connected here. We mentioned where the air came in earlier in the cap at the top here on the corner. That has to be clear so that the air can get into the engine. If that's got any debris on it, make sure and clean that off. The same goes for your radiator area here. You've got fans behind there pulling air through, so you want to keep these uh, radiators for the engine and the transmission clean and free of debris. This is the emergency exit door that we showed you earlier. You can see it's flush with the outside, so it's latched. This is the DEF fill on this side of the coach. Goes to the same place as the other one. Just above that is your dryer vent where your washer and dryer are located on the inside of the coach there in the rear bath. Even underneath it. 
In between the wheels is your HWH jack. The HWH jack is extended now, but once you go into travel mode with your jack panel, and it's saying travel mode, you want to make sure to walk around your coach before you leave and make sure the jack actually retracted and there's nothing in the way of it. Just above that, you've got your docking light and your storage for your sewer hose. So moving up here, you've got your window. This small window is the egress window in case you need to have an emergency exit. You've got your window awning, your slide topper awning above the main slide out. You've got your marker light and your uh, warning for your lane in your mirrors. I have to sign these kind of things right up. This is your battery compartment, and we covered the battery compartment on the opposite side. But in addition to the batteries and BMS, we've got additional fuses here. These are 12 volt fuses. Those 12 volt fuses are labeled on the side here. There's a panel and all of the fuse locations are here from F1 all the way down. The B's, if it's not labeled F, it's B labeled B and that would be for a breaker. But all of those locations are here. So if you have an appliance that's not working that you see the name of it here, the location of that fuse is named here. So then you could pull that fuse. If it needs to be replaced, Numar has additional fuses in the front compartment on the driver's side. The panel back there is the connections for your, uh, gr all your grounds and all your battery connections. On the left side here, we have our solar panel uh, smart charge system controller. We have the brain of it, which is the Servo GX, and we have other uh, silver leaf modules here. This cable is the same as the one we looked at the other side. If you would need to turn the batteries on so you can open your doors with the push button, you can actually just reach down here, pull this, release the latch, open the door, and you'll be able to come in here and turn on your BMS right here. Make sure that the LED light is solid blue. Once you turn it on, that means you'll have battery power. Another panel uh, control for your RVC and network is this KIB panel here. There are additional fuses here in the panel that you can check if any of the functions of the other appliances aren't working. So in the large door uh, moving forward is your water bay compartment. This compartment is heated. Uh, obviously that's because you have your black tank, gray tank, and fresh tank and all the water is here. So the heat that's generated in this compartment uh, starts the heating process at about 40 degrees and keeps everything warm. If you're camping in uh, temperatures that are cold, you, you will be protected against freezing. You want to make sure that your ITR Oasis burner is turned on so that you have heat available. If your ITR Oasis is not turned on, this compartment will not get heated. This is, of course, the soft door closed latch. Just above that, you have your shower for spraying. Uh, after you're done working in this area, you may want to clean the accessories or your hands. You can turn that on and off here. At the base here is the whole house filter. That filter, this one's new, it's never been used or open needs to be inserted in the canister and then that will filter all the house water going into the hose. All of the water 
is coming through here. It needs to be connected to a water supply. You can stow your hose there. Once that's connected, all the water that comes in your coach is going through this canister in your coach or into your fresh water tank. The fresh water tank is visible at the bottom straight back. You can actually see the level of water in your tank when it's starting to fill. Just take a flashlight, you'll be able to see that in the back. Or look at your tank monitor. Visually inspect or the tank monitor is here. This is the winterizing part of your coach. This hose actually has winterizing solution in it already. The winterizing instructions are here. So if you just follow these steps, it'll tell you to close or open these valves. This hose gets inserted into the potable antifreeze and then the water pump is turned on and the water pump draws all the antifreeze solution into the coach and you'll need to turn on all of the appliances, sinks and showers to make sure they're filled with the antifreeze solution. When you're done, you reverse the process here with your valves and put the cap back on here to winterize. This compartment door also has an emergency release that comes down from this handle. So you can uh, open this compartment door in an emergency when you don't have power to the door switch. These two low point drains are referred to here in the winterizing process. Opening these will drain your cold lines and your hot water lines so that you can then winterize them with no water in the lines. There is a gray tank rinse here and a black tank rinse here. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit, but basically you hook your water supply to either one. And when you turn your water supply on, you're rinsing the inside of the black tank or the gray tank. And then you would drain that water out. Keeping your inside of your tanks clean is important so that you don't get a lot of residue buildup on the inside of those tanks. This is the hose that is connected to the sewer outlet. By removing this cap and inserting it into the sewer drain, when you want to drain your black or your gray tank. So now that once we've connected our sewer to this hose, to the end of that hose, this makes it possible so that we can run all the effluent through the macerating device. The macerator is on the back side and it has a pump and a grinder. So everything that goes through the grinder is pushed with the pump through this hose. In order to open this hose, which you should do first, you have to reach back and there is a handle right here that you can feel. I'm going to turn a light on so you can see it. So this handle that I'm showing the light on needs to be pulled towards you. And that is in the open position. So if I grab a hold of this handle, pull it towards me. If I push it, it's closed, but I want it towards me to be open. That needs to be open first. That opens this hose up to the sewer. And this one, instead of a manual gate valve like we just opened, these are electric. So this is a gate valve and this is a gate valve. And those gate valves open and close the black and gray tank. So 
before I turn my SantaCon pump on, I'd want to open the gray tank valve, then turn the SantaCon on, and make sure it's pumping. Turn the gray off, and then start with the black. With this SantaCon on, I open the black, and completely empty all of the black tank. It should show empty. After the black tank is empty, I would turn it off and open the gray until the gray tank is empty. Then I would turn the SantaCon off here. If you want to tilt your coach so that your tanks are tilted towards the SantaCon to make sure that all of the effluent is out, you can press the tilt button here and you'll have the coach lift up on the passenger side and then all the fluids will come on this side of the tank and it's easier to empty the tank fully. The coach needs to be on air ride and running in order for the tilt to work because it uses the airbags to make the tilt happen. After the tanks are empty, you can scroll through and turn on or off your water pump. Turn it on to use the gray tank rinse. If you rinse your gray tank last, your, your black tank rinse first, then your gray tank, all of the fluid in this hose will be rinsed clean or mostly clean. This control can be rotated to either auto override manual tank fill or city supply or fresh water auto tank fill and auto city supply. So if I want to have water coming in the coach only, I would choose city supply with the arrow or point towards city supply. If I wanted to fill my fresh tank with water, I could do it manually here in the down position and it's going to continue to fill the fresh water tank until it's full and it will actually overfill. I'll see that on the uh, bottom of the tank, there's an overfill uh, tube that comes out with the duct bill. If I see that, I wanna make sure and turn off that supply so the tank doesn't continue to overfill. If I move to the auto tank fill and city, I'll get water in the coach and it will automatically fill into the water tank at about a 95% level and it will maintain there. Just to the left of that, we've got our additional water tap if you needed to uh, have an, another hose here that you wanted to have water to. This is cold water. In this compartment door, you've got your water manifold. This manifold is always pressurized with water when you have your water pump on or you're on city water, but the supply line to the exterior faucet, shower, and these other ones are only supplied with this water pressure if these are open or vertical to the line. So right now I'm supplying water here to everything. If I wanted to, let's say, turn the shower off, I could turn the shower off here. Now I won't have any water going into my interior shower. Any hot water, yeah, any hot water going into my shower. The cold water supply is this way to my washer and shower this way. For the power washer, the vendor recommends that we leave that one off unless it's in use. So uh, we're going to leave this one closed for the power washer unless we're going to use it. Um, we want to remember that whenever we connect uh, a water supply here to our hose, we don't want the pressure to be above 60 PSI. If you have a water supply that is um, you're going to have to put a reducing device in to reduce the pressure down to 60 PSI. Above the manifold for the water is a paper towel holder. 
in your winterizing process it says to drain all the low points the low points here would have to be drained and in addition to that there's another low point drain here so you'd reach your hand back open this one so it's vertical or it's straight in line with the supply and that will drain all the water out of the freshwater tank to stow your water supply hose you just loosen it up here and then we want to guide it in. There's a electric switch here to recoil. And then we'll disconnect the macerator, put our cap back on from where it was inserted into the sewage discharge and then just pull the hose up through here to store it. And then we can put our cap back on. In the event that the macerator wasn't working um, or we had other issues uh, with our electronic or electric valves for the gray and the black tank valves and we wanted to empty the tanks manually we can connect a large hose here through the floor here and if we pull this open we can manually allow the fluid to come out this way in addition to opening this valve here with the hose attached to the sewer these electric valves can be operated manually with this lever or this lever but you have to pull the retainer clip to the left and then pull the handle towards you when you're done push the lever back and lock the clip back in place then we want to after we close our valve here we can take the hose off and put this cap back on here so in our next compartment forward is our cord reel compartment. Our cord reel compartment is our 50 amp shore cord that we need to plug in. So we'll just pull that out, plug it in, and then stow that cord here. When we're plugged in the power, the shore cord supplies power into our surge guard which is actually a transfer switch a transfer switch is used in your coach because you have two sources of power one being your shore cord and the gray one comes from your generator so if your generator's on this is going to choose generator power over the shore cord power but if you're not running your generator then it chooses the shore cord power. When you have power coming into the coach, there will be two red lights lit up here. They're not on right now because we're not actually plugged in, but those two red LED lights will come on. If they give you a series of pulsating flashes, uh, refer to your owner's manual for surge guard uh, for those uh, lights. Those two red flashing lights are, if they're flashing in a series, is a fault code that you can refer to in your owner's manual. In addition to that, the monitor panel for the incoming power is displayed here. You can scroll up or down in the screen. Uh, the fault screen and navigation is here. So faults are also displayed here. You can see the power that you have coming into the coach on both lines. Above that, you've got your Silverleaf floor heat tile controller module, your management uh, for your AC power here. These are called drop tees, and these are KIB modules. Just to the left side of our surge protector, so this is an additional plug that you can plug a cord into that's not supplied with your coach 
It's a 30 amp cord. You can run this back to your trailer if you needed to for extra power. Below that is your connection for part cable. Uh, the part cable has to be plugged in with the air TV antenna turned off to receive the park cable signal in the coach. When you're ready to store the shore cord, just release it out of the lock and stow it away. In our next compartment forward is the Easy Glide tray. This tray extends to the other side. We saw that earlier. It will extend to this side in the same way. Once you've stored your items in here, you can just run the tray back in. And close your door. Next compartment forward is the same tray that we looked at on the other side. It works the same way. Once you run it out, you can store your items and then close. In your next compartment forward, you have your power wash equipment. So you can power wash your coach. Your power wash is turning on and off here. The reel for the hose is a manual retraction. In order for the power wash to come on, you have to plug it in here to a 120 volt outlet, then it will operate. The dial for the control of that is here and the extension for the uh, spray is here. Moving over here, on this side you've got your filtration system for your fresh water and refrigerator in the coach. Um, right now the system is winterized so it's turned off. You can see the, the uh, winterize is open and the UV filter is closed as well as the out because it's in the winterized position and the filter is not inserted. So if you're, when you're ready to use the filtration system, this would go into the closed and these would go into the open and then you would have to insert the filter in, the, in this canister. So this is the canister filter for the water and then this is the UV filter for the water. There's an additional uh, wipe wash for your windshield here. And moving forward. Here you have your marker lights your docking lights, and your fuel fill door for your diesel. This goes to the same tank as the opposite side, so you can fill your tank with diesel on either side. Moving forward to this compartment, it's the last one on the front. It's your electrical compartment. Inside of this compartment, of course, we saw earlier your HWH generator slide, extend and retract. There's spare fuses here because if you have a fuse either in this panel here or below, this one is for all the cockpit functions. This is for the cockpit functions that are powered by the chassis. So in between, well I should say on top of each fuse is a red LED. So if I remove a red if I remove a fuse, I would 
be simulating that that fuse would be blown and that red light would come on. So if you remove a fuse or a fuse is blown, your red LED light will display telling you you need to replace that fuse. In the panel below, in the panel below, you've got all of the fuses from the chassis manufacturer. And they're labeled on the back side of that panel. So if you had an issue with the, the seat not heating, you would go to location F23. You would find a 15 amp fuse. If it will, you pull it out, if it was blown, it, it has, there's a small tool here that you can use to pull the fuse out. If you pull the fuse out and you see it's blown, then you would choose the same amperage here, take that fuse out and replace that fuse so your, your heat in your seat would work again. There are a couple fuses here on this end that are uh, resettable. The little uh, push button in the middle, it gives you the ability to reset those so if any of these are tripped they'll be coming out, just push them in to reset. The black boxes, those are relays. They're all labeled here. RLYS is a relay, that would be one of these. The F, Fs are labeled fuses put that back, just screw it back in place. 